The world we live in is a complex and unpredictable place. Even with the best of intentions and careful planning, natural disasters, pandemics, or other unforeseen events can strike at any moment. When disasters occur, the consequences can be devastating, and it is essential to be prepared for the unexpected. That's why we are here to discuss what happens after a catastrophic national disaster and the importance of being prepared. Disasters can come in different forms and sizes, ranging from hurricanes, earthquakes, wildfires, tsunamis, to global pandemics like COVID-19. Regardless of the nature of the disaster, the aftermath can be overwhelming. Therefore, it's crucial to understand what to expect in the days, weeks, and months that follow. We all witnessed how a disaster can cause panic and bring society to its knees. And while a region can recover after a few days or weeks from one catastrophe, a national incident could leave individuals on their own with no help coming. What if we were left to fend ourselves for an extended period? Would you be ready to face the catastrophic consequences? Sadly, most individuals are not prepared to survive beyond the current week if supplies were cut off. So what can we do to prepare ourselves for such a scenario? How can we ensure that we are not caught off guard and left vulnerable in the face of an unexpected disaster? A timeline typically follows disasters, and knowing what to expect can keep you one step ahead of the chaos. But it's not just about knowing what to expect. It's also about taking action and being proactive in our preparedness. So let's start by asking ourselves some essential questions. Are we equipped with enough food, water, and other necessities to survive for an extended period? Do we have a plan in place to communicate with our loved ones and stay connected during a crisis? Are we knowledgeable about first aid and other essential skills that can come in handy during an emergency? In the aftermath of a storm or earthquake, people emerge from their shelters, grateful to be alive. But that sense of calm is fleeting. As time passes, people start to realize just how broken things are. What the hell happened here? And when there's a shortage of essential items, panic buying sets in, worsening the problem. During this time, you need to make some tough decisions. Will you shelter in place or bug out? And if you choose to stay put, do you have enough water and supplies to last? That's why the first 24 hours are the golden window to act. You need to gather as much water as possible, filling every container you have. And don't forget to gas up your vehicle while you still can. If you need to go to the store, bring cash. In a disaster, credit card systems may be down and cash is king. In the first 48 hours, you should check in with your mutual assistance group, establish floor or building meetings, and post guards at the entrances to keep your building safe if you live in an apartment complex. CB radios or ham radios can provide you with critical communication abilities. If you also have a police scanner, you can monitor the chatter to determine how the disaster's aftermath is unfolding. You should also ensure that you have enough supplies for everyone in your group, including food, water, medical supplies, and other essentials. If you decide to bug out, make sure you have a well-stocked bug out bag. In the first week, you may start to encounter more significant problems such as a lack of food and water, power outages, and potential security threats. It's essential to ration your supplies and avoid attracting attention to yourself and your group. You should also avoid leaving your location unless absolutely necessary, as it may not be safe to do so. In the second week, crime, looting, and marauding will increase, and stores and pharmacies will have already been looted. If you live with others, it is important to establish a 24-hour watch system. During the night, desperate people will try to break into buildings to obtain supplies, so having a security system in place can be critical to your safety. 
In the third and fourth weeks, the lack of resources will lead to increased violence and desperation, making it increasingly dangerous to leave your secure location. You may need to barter or trade with others for supplies or engage in defensive tactics to protect yourself and your group. It's important to continue monitoring the situation and adjusting your plans accordingly. As time goes on and the disaster's effects persist, it's important to remain vigilant and continue to assess your situation. It may become necessary to start thinking about long-term survival and sustainability. This includes things like growing your own food, collecting rainwater, and generating your own power. It's essential to have a plan and the necessary skills and supplies to carry out these tasks. Keeping up with news and updates can provide valuable information on when help may arrive and how the recovery process is progressing. If you have a community or mutual aid group, working together can be crucial to surviving and thriving in the aftermath of a disaster. So have you thought about what you would do if a disaster struck? Do you have a plan in place or are you flying by the seat of your pants? The truth is, being prepared could be the difference between life and death. Tell us in the comments what steps you've taken to prepare for catastrophic national disaster. We want to hear your survival stories and strategies. And while you're at it, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button so that we can keep you up to date with all the latest tips and tricks for staying safe in a post-disaster world.